because I could get stuck there, I promise you. Acts chapter 4, verse 27 says, For truly, against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. So far, the scripture, he's a mighty God. I want to talk for the next little while from the subject today. Shake this place. Shake this place place. Will you just type it on the screen? Speak it out of your mouth. Say, Lord, shake this place. Prayer 
Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, prayer has been cast as this lofty ritual used to impress God. It has been used in many circles as some measuring stink, stick of the spirituality of one. The more articulate and the more eloquent people would be in prayer would suggest the more spiritual they are. But to reduce prayer to its common denominator to understand it in a very simple manner, prayer is simply communicating with God. Prayer is simply talking to God and listening to God. Prayer is, in fact, a conversation. Prayer is, in fact, you sharing with God your hearts, your thoughts, in some way of communicating, and God making known to you that he has heard you and that there is some response from heaven. God initiates the dialogue. God initiates the dialogue, and he does it internally in man. God initiates the dialogue because Paul says in Romans, he says, we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. God has a way of prompting us to pray. It doesn't even matter how spiritual you are or not spiritual you are. There is something innately in the embedded in the soul of man, a desire for somehow to communicate with something greater than themselves. Even the atheist won't admit it, but in his soul, there is a seed of prayer. Things can go on in a non-believer's life, and they will utter these words, O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus. People call on Jesus that never darken the doorstep of a church, who will in conscious mind denounce the validity of Christ. But in the soul of man, God put the seed of prayer. When he made man, he put man in a place, or rather, he put in man the ability and the need and the desire to talk to him. Even people far off seek to talk to God. That's why I don't believe the lie. I don't believe the statement, rather. God doesn't hear sinners' prayer. That cannot be true because had he not listen to a sinner's prayer, I would have never been saved. <laughs> so it is not true that God doesn't hear sinner's prayer. He hears the prayers of anyone who makes them. Mm -hmm. Because he initiates the dialogue, then prompts him to use his human articulation to express his thoughts to a God who knows them afar off. God initiates the prayer in you. He initiates the conversation, or rather he initiates and prompts you to seek for him, and then he uses and you use your human ability to articulate to him what you feel and what you are thinking. And the strange thing about prayer is that God initiates prayer in you knowing what you want before you even ask. Oh, Lord. He knows what you need without you asking. He knows what you are thinking before you can get it in your mind correctly, before you can form the thought. Before, and God knows before you can form the words, God already knows what you need. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, uh, it, it, the prayer that you pray, even when you cannot articulate properly what you feel inside, he knows how to take your groanings and translate them into a language in the spirit 
And by the time your moan comes out, God knows what's in your heart. That's why when I was coming up in church, when I was coming up in church, uh, the saints would engage in prayer service. I know we don't talk much about it anymore, but we used to have prayer service where we came to church to pray. And um, it wasn't uh, it wasn't cloaked in something else. It wasn't disguised as another service. It was prayer service. And um, we came and we kneeled on our knees. I know y'all martyr now, but folk don't do it. But we used to kneel on our knees or lay on the altar. We would find a place to pray. And I would hear the mothers and the seasoned saints of the church would seemingly travail for hours, sometimes hours on on, on, I mean, hours at a time. And it didn't seem like they would be saying much. And I didn't understand it always, but I could hear it. Man, my grandmother and mother and all of those down there saying, whoa, Jesus. And Jesus. And I mean, they would call him for an hour without saying anything else. And then every now and then they'd throw in an old oh, Jesus. <laughs> and every now and then they come on Jesus and, and, and oh Jesus help help us Jesus and, and and that thing would begin to churn and it would begin to gain momentum and as a result I thought it wasn't prayer until I realized as I got a little older that it was exactly what prayer is about prayer is not about you giving God your loan laundry list. It's not about you giving him a Christmas wish list. It's about you making connection in the spirit. Likewise also the spirit helpeth our infirmities for we don't know how to pray as we ought but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. I'm grateful because there are times when I cannot articulate how I feel but the Holy Ghost knows how to interpret the language of the groan of your soul. Woo. When you can't say, when you can't say a word. If I had some FBH members here, hallelujah, they would say, if I couldn't say a word, I just wave my hand. Hmm. Prayer, my brothers and sisters, is the engaging of the whole person in communication with God. It is engaging of the whole person. You cannot, I, I, I'm sorry, I keep referring to the old church because I'm in that bridge generation where I am acutely aware of the sound and the, the culture of the old church. And of course, I'm young enough to embrace the new contemporary church. And one of the things, amen, that I realized coming up in the church is that prayer, amen, was not some chilling opportunity or some chilling activity. It was not a time for you to come and be quiet and time to, for you to just be cool with it. If you were going to pray, they told us we had to learn how to pray through. I wish I had a witness here somewhere. We learned, we learned early how to pray through and travail. Yes, Lord. We would travail. We would travail. Amen. You didn't pray. Amen. And come quick. Amen. You didn't come and just pray for a few minutes and just let it go. But you prayed until there was a breakthrough. You prayed until you felt a connection with God. And prayer is the engaging of the whole person. You can't be cute and talk about I'm going to pray through. You got to pray until you get out of you. And sometimes it takes, amen, that the, 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 the activity, it takes the behavior, it takes the exerting of yourself to get in a place where you are out of yourself so you can talk to God and there's no more I, but it's me and him talking. I'm in another place. And that's why the enemy fights us to pray. He fights you to keep you from praying because he knows if you ever pray through, if you ever break through, you're going to come out with a deliverance. He knows if you ever get there, I wish I had one witness. He knows if you ever get past your flesh and get past how you feel and get past what you're going through, there is a breakthrough coming. Yes, Lord. So that's the reason why he fights for your consistency. That's why the fight is for your consistency. Uh, it's so vehement and your focus is always a task. It's hard to focus and the reason why because the devil knows that if she ever gets focused in prayer, if she ever prays and I mean and consistently talks to God, her life is going to change. He knows that if you ever really develop a strong prayer life, 
If you ever really develop, amen, a consistent prayer life, your life is going to change. You cannot pray and remain the same. You cannot have a consistent prayer life and things don't change in your life. And if prayer don't change your situation, it'll change you for your situation. But either way, prayer works. That's why you can't pray. That's why you and I struggle to pray. Amen. We have, we have attention for everything else, but somehow prayer for some reason escapes us. And the, the attention and the consistency in prayer is a challenge because there is a power released in prayer. There is a there is glory that's released in prayer. There are answers that are given in prayer. And that's why the devil wants to fight you in prayer. He says, go ahead and shout, but don't pray. Lord, help me here today. Uh, go ahead and dance, but don't pray. Sing, but don't pray. Preach, but don't pray. Play, but don't pray. If I don't care what you do, but just don't pray because prayer will change who you really are. You need some Bible. I see you looking at your screen like, I don't understand that. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, come on closer. Let me just tell you. The Bible says that when Paul, amen, had his experience, Saul had his experience on the road called Damascus, that Ananias got an email from glory and the email stated that, that you are to host Paul, Saul as he comes. Now the problem was when Ananias read his email he said I cannot host him. I'm nervous because this is the guy who has the reputation of going around killing Christians. Saul's reputation was he was a murderer with a man papers. He was a hitman for the Christians and he was proudly going around harassing and persecuting the Christians and Ananias had angst and Ananias had anxiety because he says, how in the world are you letting this guy come to my house? But when the Lord spoke to Ananias, he said to him, he said, let me just explain to you why you don't need to worry about him now because he's praying. Mm. he's not preaching it's not that I called him to preach it's not that I called him to play it's not that I called him to sing but what I called uh, it's not about I called him to, 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 to display his gifts or his talent the reason why you can trust him is because he prayeth now and I'm going to tell you something I have discovered. Don't, amen, and I want to just pass this on to somebody that may be listening stop trusting people who don't pray hmm. people who don't pray gossip. Mm. People who don't have a prayer life uh, are judgmental and self-righteous. Uh, people who don't pray cannot be trusted. Uh, people who don't pray will love you in your face and talk about you like a mangy dog behind your back. Mm. People who don't pray uh, are tender feeling uh, and are always sometimes up and sometimes down. Uh, people who don't pray uh, walk with God for a month uh, and time something doesn't go their way. Uh, they are ready to quit and throw in the towel uh, because prayer has a way of conditioning you. Prayer has a way of strengthening you. And let me just throw this in while I'm thinking about it. Prayer is not for God, it's for you. God don't need to pray, you need to pray. Because the more I talk to God, the better I feel. The more I talk to God, the more I see his glory. The more I talk to him, I see and feel his way of doing things. Somebody ought to throw your hands up and say, Lord, give me my prayer life back. Is because prayer influences your thoughts and your behavior and your actions. And that's what the devil wants to steal from you. Shout, but don't pray. I keep saying it. I, I know it sounds a little redundant, but, but dance, but don't pray. Dress up, but don't pray. Hallelujah. I marvel and I wish to God and I wonder and I'm hoping, amen, even in this stage of my life, that God would condition and fortify my prayer life. Because when I study the fathers of old and study the mothers of old, hallelujah, I see that they had something that this generation is missing. They had a prayer life. Hallelujah to God. And it seems like a praying people are a people with 
power. Y'all see how the essentials run together? Yeah, yeah. You're not going to be able to summon the power without a prayer life. I marvel at hearing the stories of a C.H. Mason, Bishop C.H. Mason, the founder of the Church of God in Christ, who has such a prayer life until for the first six to eight hours of every day, he was spending in time in prayer. I marvel at the Mother McLaughlin's. Thank you, Jesus. I marvel at those women who would spend hours in travail for the people of God. I marvel at even the life of a bishop, Apostle William Lee Bonner, who is not just what I read about, but what I have witnessed, a man that would lay on his face for hours. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, would pray in the morning, come back in the noonday, and then at night. Hallelujah, and it seemed like the prayer would just be so, amen, so fresh and so passionate each time. But these are the same people that God has used to do great exploits in the kingdom of God. So what are you telling me? I'm trying to tell you if we're going to shake this nation. If we're going to shake our world, if we're going to see real change happen, we got to get back to the basics. Protest if you want to. I applaud the protests. But when you get finished protesting, make sure you pray as hard as you protest. We must pray, we must pray, we must pray, we must pray. Thank you, Jesus. While I was coming to town today, thank you, Lord, I heard, I got a text saying, amen, a mass shooting had occurred. Hallelujah, thank God it was a false alarm. Hallelujah, but four people have been shot just on this week. In the city of Orangeburg, last weekend was another shooting. We're not going to change, hallelujah, the, the environment by getting mad and talking about it. We're going to change it if we get on our knees. And it is not government's responsibility to pray. I need the church folk to hear me when I say this. It is not the church, amen, it is not the government's responsibility to lead a prayer vigil. It is not, amen, thank you, Lord, some civic leaders' responsibility to bring us into prayer. Hallelujah, we don't need nobody to call us into prayer. The word of God already called us into prayer. For it's my people. Lord, I wish I had the right church to preach to, huh? who are called by my name, hmm, will humble themselves. Get over your ego. Huh? Get over who's bigger. Huh? Get over who's mega. Huh? Get over who's, amen, more important and got more money. Huh? Humble yourself huh? and pray. Huh? Hallelujah. Not sing together. Huh? Pray together, not dance together, pray together. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, what will I do? Say of the Lord, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive sin. Huh, and I'll heal the land. Huh. Hey, if you're waiting for black folk, let me tell you something. Huh. I'm trying not to be political, but it just keeps coming up. Huh. Hallelujah. If you're waiting for white folk to apologize, huh, you're going to be disappointed. Huh. That's why when there's ever an attempt from huh, a white preacher to apologize to us, huh, you're so jacked up and messed up because huh, you are expecting huh, change to come from a heart. Uh, that is black with racism uh, and ignorant to uh, the plight of our people. Uh, that's not how change is going to happen. Uh, it's going to happen when we get on our knees uh, and talk to the God who brought our ancestors through the middle passage uh, and kept our mothers and fathers uh, on the plantations uh, and kept our mothers and our grandmothers and grandfathers uh, through civil rights. Uh, amen. If we going to pray, if we pray to that God, uh, he's the same God uh, that can keep us through what we're going through now. Uh, nobody's wearing a white hood uh, and a white robe. Uh, 
They're wearing suits and ties and they got a pen in their hands making decisions and passing laws. It's called systemic evil. But I got something that if I use my essential in the middle of all of the Messiah, in the middle of all of this, if we pray like a bulldozer, God will change things. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. So it is. So it is. Uh, that prayer, prayer, prayer. If y'all was in the, in the house with me, I tell you, be seated. Uh, thank you, Jesus. But prayer, prayer was the founding principle and practices of the early church. Uh, and there is a glory and, the, and a maturity that rests on a praying church. Uh, people who pray uh, uh, are mature. Because prayer has a way of maturing you. Hmm. Oh, God, I've been pastoring a little while. And I have discovered something. That meeting with folk and talking to them about stuff don't really make a difference. Hallelujah. Pointing out wrong to people don't matter. Because when they got an attitude that don't want to hear you, it won't matter. Hallelujah. But I, I took a page out of the play the playbook of the old church. They didn't have a whole lot of counseling sessions. And they didn't have a whole lot of stuff that we try to do to, amen, make people feel warm and fuzzy. What's the matter, baby? Why are you acting like that? Why did you say that? And why are you doing that? No, 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 no. Amen. When the spirit of the place wasn't right, the pastor would get up and say, we're going to pray. I know what it is for in the middle of the service for the service to be shut down the order of service as we have it hallelujah said the spirit ain't right in here everybody get on your knees because folk that don't want to pray are dangerous folk that don't want to pray and won't yield to prayer that's why marriages don't work because nobody wants to yield to the spirit of God through prayer that's why relationships oh y'all ain't gonna like what I got to say but if you pray God will change things if you pray, God will mature you. If you pray, you amen, walk in power. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, thank you, Jesus. Much power. And so here it is, this text that comes to our attention. And I don't have much longer here, but this text, the historical setting of this text is that the Roman Empire is not threatened by the Christian movement. It is the Jewish officials, uh, the Sanhedrin court, uh, uh, who took issue with these Jesus people. Mm -hmm. Because if you read up in the text, you discover it was the, um, the trial of Peter and John. After they had healed the man at the beautiful gate who was lame in his feet from uh, birth. <laughs> and now he was a lame beggar and now he's walking, leaping and praising God. Uh, it was not the Romans who arrested them and interrogated them. It was the Jewish. Now, I need to make this point. It was the Jewish Jewish Sanhedrin court. It was religious. It was the religious establishment who had a problem with Peter and John. And they were, their conflict was this. We really don't know what to do with this miracle because we cannot deny the fact that a notable miracle has taken place. We've seen this man every day of his life in front of the beautiful gate. As we went into church, we passed by him and threw him a dollar, threw him a quarter, and kept going on right into church. But now this man ain't there, and he's standing in front. Oh, God, how did he get there? Peter and John are being, amen, arraigned, as it were. And they are in their trial. Thank you, Lord. And while they're in their trial, uh, the defense attorney says, or rather the, 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 the judge says, do you have any witnesses to call forth? The, the Jewish magistrates, the Sanhedrin make their, the prosecuting attorney makes his case and looks over and said, 
um, your honor, the, uh, the prosecution rests. Uh, they call for the defense and there is no a man witness. Uh, they scramble out. The paralegals run out. Somebody sends a note and says, go find the man. Hmm. Uh, go find the man because there's no words we can say but if you find the man he is a material witness Lord I praise you I wish I had some time to talk about this he is our material witness they find the man uh, come on let's paint the picture He's in the city square. He's in the mall. He's out shopping. Now you got to understand something. This man has never walked a day in his life. He's never walked in his life. And he's never had money. But now he's in the mall. Now he is out doing his thing. Mm -hmm. He's out doing his thing and he's enjoying his life. And then they call him and say, listen, we need you down at the courthouse. He says, well, I hadn't seen the sights yet. I just got my legs and I hadn't gone around where I wanted to go, but I'll be at the trial. He comes and the Bible gives us to understand in chapter number three it is. And seeing the lame man standing there, they could say nothing against it. In other words, let me just color it like I need to color it so you can see it. They are in the courtroom. Peter and John are in the defendant's seat. The prosecution and the Sanhedrin are on their side. And in comes the lame man walking. The judge is just about to make a decision on the case. But the lame man comes in walking. Now there's a problem because they have nothing, no more recourse because the very thing that they said did not happen. And they were trying to accuse Peter and John of is standing before them. And so now they have to switch their amen strategy. They switch, they switch their strategy and say to them, well, since the man is standing here, let me ask you a question. By what name did this miracle happen? Hallelujah. And they said, listen, let me just tell you this. We don't know no other name. Hmm. How did y'all get to do this? We healed him in the name of Jesus hallelujah and said so now listen to what we want you to do we don't mind what you did but as a result of this so that it was spread no further the fame of Jesus name so it won't go out to everybody let's keep this on the down low and call his name no more don't use that name any longer. Do your duty, do what you want to do, but don't call his name. Peter, with the same ebullience that he got up on the day of Pentecost and preached, that same ebullience got up in him again. And in Acts 4 and 12, I fear you coming, Jesus. In Acts 4 and 12, he said, listen, we cannot, hallelujah, talk what we don't know. Peter said, I can't preach what I don't know. I can only preach what I know. And what I know is that his name got power. What I know is his name works. I'm almost there. I feel you coming. He says, I can't preach what I don't believe. And I know his name. And his name works. And the Bible says that Peter got the Holy Ghost again. The Holy Ghost stood up in him. And in Acts 4 and 12, he says, neither is there salvation than any in, in any other name. In other words, the only way you can be saved is through the name of Jesus Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. And so it is that we must understand and be unashamed. I'm all for ecumenical amen activity. I am all for us gathering together. Amen. But I cannot be on a platform that tells me not to use the name. 
Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, amen. I know folk want to, amen, embrace other faiths. Uh, and we want to lock arms and sing Kumbaya, my Lord. Uh, I understand that. Uh, amen. But I am a Jesus name preacher. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I may lose some listeners right here. My numbers may go down right there, but it doesn't matter. I'm not preaching for numbers. I'm preaching for the name. Because the name has power. If you're going to be baptized, you got to be baptized in his name. Where you get that from? Well, i tell you where I get it from. Acts 2 and 38 says, repent every one of you. Amen. And be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it for you. Huh. Well, you want to ask me what's in the name? Huh. Well, let me just tell you what's in the name. Huh. In the name is the power. Huh. In the name is authority. Huh. Do you hear what I'm saying? For the Bible says, huh. I said the Bible says huh. that in him huh, dwelleth the fullness huh, of the Godhead bodily and we are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power Jesus is the name of the father Jesus is the name of the son and the Holy Ghost came in his name I know y'all don't want to believe it, but I got a little bit more Bible for you there. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld him as a uh, man in all of his glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth the power is in the name of Jesus Peter said I got to preach the name I got to lay hands in the name I will sing in his name I'm going to pray in his name. I'm going to dance in his name. I'm going to preach in his name. Somebody shout yes. I know y'all, I can't hear you do it. But right where you are, tell somebody it's all in the name. Yes, it is. The Bible says, hallelujah, that Peter, after they were released, out of the custody of the Sanhedrin and the Jewish man, uh, magistrates. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. They began. <laughs> Amen. To go into a time of prayer. <laughs> the time lamenting questions <laughs> are asked in prayer. <laughs> he said, why <laughs> do the heathen rage? <laughs> why are people groups? <laughs> Amen. Anti-God. <laughs> Why are the nations against God? And why do the people plan, amen, and plot bad things? I'm scratching my head today because I'm trying to figure out why are so many people anti-God and anti-Christ when all he's ever done was bless them. All he's ever done huh, was heal you. Huh. All he's ever done huh, was make a way for you. Huh. I'm trying to figure out huh, why huh, are so many people huh, against God. Huh. And then he keeps on asking questions. Huh. He said the kings and the rulers huh, are against the Lord. Hallelujah. In other words, it's systemic evil. It's not just one or two people here and there 
who don't like Christians. But there is a whole system. That's why you got to learn how to love everybody and ask God to put amen forgiveness and love down in your heart. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness against spiritual wickedness in high places but don't worry about all of that because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they're mighty through God to the pulling down uh, of strongholds uh, to the casting down uh, of imaginations uh, and the bringing down uh, of every high thing uh, that exalts itself uh, against the knowledge of God uh, I'm trying to tell y'all uh, there's a real demon uh, there's a real devil uh, there's a real evil uh, there's a real system uh, that has been uh, constructed against us hallelujah there is a system that don't want you to make it there is a system designed for you to fail there is a system that don't want you to be a homeowner there is a system that wants you to be homeless there is a system that wants you to be sick and die there is a system that wants your family to be destroyed but I got the vaccine I got the answer for the system that's been constructed against you I'm going to give y'all the password the next time the system tries to lock you out just type in J E S U S and when you type it in it's going to give you access in man in glory it's going to give you access to the power of heaven because whatsoever you bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth is going to be loosed in heaven you got the power you got the authority now use what you got this is your essential this is your second essential to use during the pandemic in the face of threatening activity in the face of being mishandled in the face of social injustice in the face of COVID-19 in the face of economic disparity in the face of being raped murdered and plundered in the face of all of that Peter said to the Lord Lord give us power Lord give us holy boldness somebody got to pray with me Lord give me the power to speak truth to power you got to pray till you get bold pray until you don't worry about what people think too about you huh? you got to pray huh, until huh, you got endowed you huh? we got to pray y'all huh, until we get endowed huh, with power huh, to tread on serpents huh, power huh, to lay hands on the sick pay power huh, amen to speak huh, in the name of Jesus huh, power huh, to perform miracles in the name of Jesus. What type of prayer are you praying? You can't be cute in this season. You can't be a man conservative in this season. You can't look to be chilling in this season. This is the hour where we must pray until the environment shifts. We got to pray until we move heaven. 
We got to pray uh, until we shake up the heavens. Uh, we got to pray uh, until we pierce the darkness. Uh, we got to pray uh, until heaven responds. Uh, not this once more and again. Uh, your humble servants come before you. Uh, I'm not talking about that kind of prayer. Uh, but you got to pray uh, and call on God till you lose your voice pray until you sweat pray until you get tongue tied pray until your wig goes that way and your weave goes another pray you got to pray y'all you got to pray with honesty you got to tell the truth say God I'm a mess God I don't deserve it I messed up again hallelujah but I'm honest and against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight you got to pray with sincerity Lord I don't care what nobody thinks you know my heart you know where I really am and I want you to search me Lord and if you find anything that shouldn't be take it out and strengthen me I want to be right I want to be saved and I want to be whole you got to pray with passion. I know there are some people that say it don't take all of that, all that hollering that you're doing. We don't do that on the internet. That's old school. That ain't what's happening. You need to put on some Tim's. You need to dress a little cooler. I know, I know how you feel. And it don't take all that sweating. You ain't got to holler. He ain't hard of hearing. I ain't hollering. I ain't telling y'all to holler. And I ain't hollering. Cause God is hard of hearing. I'm hollering to drown out the sound of doubt and worry. I'm hollering to make hell nervous. I'm hollering because every time the devil tells me I can't, I'm hollering back. I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. You got to pray with intensity. Do you hear what I said? You got to pray with intensity. That's what Isaiah talked about in Isaiah chapter 62, verse number six and seven. He said, I have set watchmen on your walls. Oh, Jerusalem, they shall never hold their peace day and night you who make mention of the Lord do not keep silent and give God no rest until he establishes and until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth this is not the hour for you to pray every now and then but men are always to pray and not faint you hear what I'm saying? I'm getting ready to give y'all up. Amen. But I feel the prayer wheel turning. Yes, sir. Somebody is being stirred under the sound of my voice. Somebody is being stirred to pray right now. And even after this broadcast is over, after this service has concluded, the prayer wheel is going to be turning in your soul. In the book of Joel, chapter number 2, verse 15, he said, blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the nursing babes, let the bridegroom go out of his chamber and the bride from her dressing room and let the priests who minister to the Lord I want to say to all of my preaching 
brothers and sisters. I want to say to y'all, this is the time where we must lock arms and pray. He said, let the priests who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach that the nation should rule over them. Why should they say among the people, where is their God? This is the hour where we must get together priest uh, and people uh, and get between uh, the porch and the altar uh, and say Lord uh, spare us uh, spare us uh, murder is in the land uh, sickness is in the land uh, brutality is in the land uh, disease is in the land uh, poverty is in the land uh, but Lord uh, I'm sitting between huh, the porch and the altar huh, saying, Lord, spare your people. Huh, somebody huh, under the sound of my voice, huh, type on the screen, huh, holler in your house, huh, spare us. Huh, yeah. I said, spare us. Huh, spare us from the wrath that is to come and I want to tell you that are listening to me today we've seen stuff that we've never seen before but let me put on my prophetic amen glasses and tell you what I heard in the Holy Ghost this is not the end of it it's just getting started and it's about to get worse and the only people that will be spared are people who pray are people who will get a hold of the horns of the altar where are the morning women I'm calling for the morning women I know you had a whole lot of time to chill in quarantine but what would happen if all the women would sit up a wailing into the heavens I'll tell you what would happen things would turn around cause God can't ignore a praying people God can't ignore people who pray you remember I got to let you go now but y'all remember Hezekiah when he got the bad news that he was going to die he turned his face to the wall and talked to God this is the hour where we must do like Hezekiah and turn our face to the wall and say God have mercy Lord have mercy somebody I said somebody everybody I need you I said I need you right where you are to pray we're getting ready to pray and I declare unto you that the place where you are is about to be shaken God is going to shake up everything you got the power to pray until things shake tell the Lord shake this place shake me shake my family shake my community shake my city shake my government shake the church the church needs to be shaken oh lord of prayer that calls me from a world of sin and being my father's throne they call 
my bones and wishes in seasons of distress and grief my soul